Hi, and welcome to module 7 in lecture, video lecture 2. This one is on sequences and series. Um, I've actually already seen a lot of this one already in various guises. Um, we talked about, for instance, induction. We talked about proofs in, lecture, in the end of video lecture 1. Um, to do that, we need to define a um, series. Actually, we define a series and a sequence, but um, be this may, we, we, we defined already some of the aspects of sequence and series already. Fundamentally, a sequence of objects is just a list of objects that have, um, well, you don't have to have some pattern, but often they have some kind of pattern to them. They're often indexed in some fashion. We discuss indices in video lecture one. Um, so for instance, x sub i, and read it x sub i, is a variable that's indexed by some integer i. Typically, the integers run, that are indexed, these things run from 0 to infinity or 1 to infinity. Um, it'll always be defined for you. If I want to represent a sequence, what I can do is take these curly braces, curly brackets, around this. And what that does is represent a sequence. Sometimes you see an n there instead. This is a sequence indexed by i. Represents that sequence. Sometimes they want to be really explicit. You might see on the side of this thing this notation. This means i. That should be an i. It's hard to draw a tiny dot with this thing. Oh, maybe for the wrong side of the pen. i equals 1 to n. That means the sequence starts at i equals 1 and ends at i equals n. So for instance, this thing is the same thing as writing x1 x2, dot, 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 which means stuff I'm leaving out, these ellipses, to xn. This is another way of writing that sequence. Again, a sequence is just a list of objects of some type. A series is a sum of the elements in a sequence. So this thing here. It is a sum of the sequence I just wrote. And you can write it out, x1 plus x2 plus dot 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 plus xn. Now you know what I mean by saying we've done this already. When we define the summation operator, this one right here, we effectively defined a series in that fashion. A series is just the sum of elements in a sequence. Um, why do we care about this? Well, we care about this in general um, because we have on occasion the desire in political science or economics or social sciences more broadly to deal with sequences or to sum a sequence as a series. Um, a particular area of interest here that one example we can give for when we care about these things is when we're doing game theory. When you have a game in which actions take place over some time period, we call those actions of the time period a history of all actions. And this history is very important because sometimes what happened in the past can affect what you can do in the future and what you want to do in the future. So we care about the history of the game up to that point. For instance, if we're both playing some, say, Prisoner's Dilemma and we can cooperate or defect, then but say it's, it's sequential, well in the first period, if we both cooperated, we might take different actions in the second period than we would if we had both defected in the first period. In other words, if we both played nice with each other in the first period, maybe we'll continue to play nice in the second period, but if we both were nasty in the first period, maybe we'll continue to be nasty in the second period. So the, the actions in the first period affect the actions in the second period. And there are lots more examples of this. If you're in a bargaining scenario and I offer you something, your response depends on what I offer to you. So it depends on the history of the game prior to your opportunity to say yes or no. Those are all represented as sequences. One particular example of this is when you have a sequence of repeated play in which you can get some kind of payoff in every period, but future periods payoffs are discounted relative to present periods payoffs. What do I mean by this? Let's say I played a game in which every time I cooperated with you and you cooperated with me, I get a payoff of two. 
And that's how you got this forever. We just cooperated forever. Very, very happy about that. So we get two and two and two and two and two. But what if my happiness actually decreases over time? So I'm really happy right now. I get my payoff of two right now for cooperation. But next period of two isn't as important to me right now because I have to wait a whole period to get it. Right? What if a period is a year or a decade? It's not as important to me as the present period. Well, I might discount the value of the future period. I do that in game theory by sticking a delta over there. And that's a discounted payoff. Delta is less than one. So here delta is in the set um, 0 to 1 with 1 not in that set. Um, and then the next period is discounted. If I wait two periods, it's discounted twice. So it's delta squared and delta cubed forever. And I might ask, well, what's the value of the game to me now, taking into account all future payoffs? Well, it's the sum of this of, of this series this sequence of elements, or rather, it's the sum of the series. Well, you can represent this in a different fashion. 2 times the sum from i equals 0 to infinity of delta to the i. That's a series with, with the sum. Now, we can't sum this yet. First of all, there's an infinity there, um, and we haven't talked about limits yet. But we'll do that next, uh, the next module. But the point is, you can represent this infinite sum of payoffs as, as a series. Now, what if I change my behavior? What if I decide to take all I can right now and run? What if, if I said, OK, well, you're cooperating. I'm going to steal it off myself. And I get a payoff of 4 by doing that. But then, having observed me do that, you never want to do anything with me again. So in the future, I get 0 every period. Now I discount these zeros in the same fashion, but they're still zero. So this sum, this series, is just four of the sum. Well, now I can ask, is it beneficial for me to take the money and run now and accept a future lack of payoffs, or should I just cooperate forever? To do that, I would compare my payoff for um, taking the money and run, which is four, with my payoff for cooperating forever, which is this sum. To compare accurately, I need to calculate the sum. And here again is where you end up using series. So game theory is a bunch of examples like this where series and sequences are very important. Um, okay. Discrete time actions also have some um, usage of this kind of thing in stats, but we'll talk less about that than this because this is a little more concrete way of describing series. And it's a more concrete example to use for calculating sums. Okay, so that's it for this video, um, this module. Um, the next one we'll do limits of sequences and series. Thank you very much.